So just want everybody to know that we are going to start the recording right now. And feel free to use the chat. So hi all, welcome. This is the SPC, that is Slack Platform Community, Pimpri Chinchwad Chapter event. We are really excited to have you all on a Saturday morning and excited to see so many people attending in, not just from uh, Pimpri Chinchwad, but also across India because of the virtual mode that we are in right now. So that actually enables all of us to connect irrespective of the place that we are currently in. I'll be sharing my screen for my part of the presentation. In case you are unable to see the presentation, please let me know in the chat. And uh, in case you face any connectivity issues at that moment, I would say that you can uh, leave the event and rejoin again using the same link and you'll be able to join in fresh from start and be able to see all the things that are going on. So yes, welcome all. I'm the chapter leader. I'm Drishti Jen. You can find me on Twitter by at the rate uh, Drishti J Jen. Also encourage you all to um, tweet out uh, during the event about your uh, about the fact that you are attending it, encouraging others in your network to come join in as well. Once you tag me, I'll be able to retweet it. That makes it easy. And yes, I'm as excited as the emoji right here to host this event virtually. So this is the SPC Pimpri Chinchwad chapter. So we are a part of uh, the Slack community group as a whole across the world. And Slack platform community, many of you seem to be new to us. And I will be glad to take you through the path of what do we do? What can you expect? And how do, in future, once things get back to normal, we'll be able to meet in person and have networking sessions, knowledge sharing sessions, and grow all along together. So this is the event today, that is Slack platform apps and more. And uh, we have a great speaker with us today. Shortly, we'll be having their session. And since all of you RSVP'd right on the event, you all were able to get the pre-reminders for the email so that none of you forget about it because I know how hectic work can be and managing, a, a, taking out the time to actually grow your skills so that you grow your career and keep on growing as a part of the IT industry. So let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, I'm a computer engineer. I'm a tech geek. I'm a social entrepreneur. I run a nonprofit organization called Samyak Trishti Foundation, wherein we work in the, in the sectors of environment, education, and healthcare. And uh, we are actually present in 11 plus cities across India. And we believe in democratizing opportunities for uh, both the privileged as well as the unprivileged. I'm an international tech speaker. I'll be talking a little about it about it in the next few slides. And I'm a mentor to a number of students who want who want and seek a direction and uh, generally do not get it through the formal education that they're going through, but would like to have a helping hand. So I mentor students as well. So I'm an international tech speaker. I've spoken about various open source technologies across the globe, uh, spanning from Singapore to Europe to UK to Brazil um, and have shared my knowledge on various technologies. Uh, the photos that you see here are from serverless chase, which was held last year. All of these were in-person events because we did not have uh, any restrictions on doing so at that moment. 
And the photos that you see on the right are from the Microsoft APAC headquarters in Singapore. So I speak about various technologies. I'm very passionate about Slack. That is what led me to take up uh, spreading about Slack, the developer tools, the platform, and how you two can grow through this chapter. And along with that, I like in my talks as well, I speak about Python, PHP, uh, open source technologies uh, like GraphQL and data visualization, AI, machine learning as a whole. So feel free to connect with me if you want to have a quick chat about something. So now, firstly, let me tell you what is our chapter about. So we started a few months ago. And in the initial phase, um, it was indeed a little um, tough to spread the word about the chapter. But luckily, I have accomplished the task of growing the chapter from what we were seven people to 70 group members right now. If you have RSVP, but you aren't a part of the chapter, I would encourage you and I would encourage that you join the chapter so that you keep on receiving future updates of events. So this is our official um, page that is slackcommunity.com forward slash uh, pimply hyphen chinchword forward slash. Uh, you can join the chapter, uh, the group, so that you are updated about various events that we do. These range from technical talks. To, it is not just only for technical background people, but also for designers, for product managers, for everybody to come, collaborate, learn, and grow together. Now let me focus a little bit more about what we aim to achieve, we as a whole aim to achieve through the chapter and the community, what my aims as a chapter leader are, and what I wish we as a community grow together to be. So the first one is about sharing. This chapter will be a place wherein it would be a comfortable space for everybody to come share their knowledge. This could be right from uh, technical topics to even everyday tips about how do you grow in your career? How do you make the most of what you are doing? How do you get that promotion that you have been waiting to get for? So sharing knowledge, interacting with others is the key pillar of the foundations of this chapter that I lead. The second is to learn. Along with growing, it is very important that we keep our skills up to date. So how do we do that if we are not learning on a frequent and everyday basis, right? So this is a place wherein you can learn about various topics, right? From It could be related to a Slack app that you're building, or it could be related to a work project that you are doing. It is anything and everything Slack and beyond as well. As a whole, I want to help the complete developer community to come together, learn, and grow through the chapter. And that is where grow in terms of being a great person yourself from within, as well as in the work that you do. So grow in a way so that you too are able to help and uplift your own career path. Or maybe you could find a new career path through the chapter, through Slack, and grow ahead in that. So on that note, so on that note, I hope you are all very, very excited about sharing, learning, and growing through the Pimpri Chinchwood Slack community chapter. So I'm really excited to be able to do this as well as I'm very excited for all of us to come together as a community and grow. So now uh, I would like to hand over to our speaker for the day. Our speaker today is Athar, who is a senior software engineer at the Platform Engineering Group at Slack. He has 10 years of experience in cloud and enterprise applications, AWS, and he's also AWS and Kubernetes certified. 
and an op occasional blogger and an open source contributor. So, hey, Athar, we're really glad to have you today as our speaker. Hi, Drishti. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Yes, I believe everybody is as, as excited as I am to hear more about Slack platform apps and many more things that you have for us today. So I'll hand it over to you from here. Over to you, Athar. Thanks, Rishri. Thanks for the introduction. Thank you, everyone, for joining on Saturday morning. Uh, first of all, some uh, logistic check. Uh, first, I'm going to share my screen. Just give me a thumbs up if you're able to see it. Oh, can you see it now? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, so one more thing. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can, can see, see your Slack? presentation. Can you see Slack? Okay, then yes. we are ready to go. Cool. So uh, just a warning, I'm also accompanied by my three-year-old daughter. She's sitting in the next room, and she might provide some good background noise. Uh, so yeah. Uh, okay, so let's get started uh, with the presentation. Um, just a small introduction. I'm Atharva Chauthaiwale. I work for a Slack platform team. I'm a senior software engineer there. Usually, I build uh, features, fix bugs, and talks to uh, talk to customers. Uh, and today, uh, we are going to talk about Slack uh, platform, uh, Slack apps, and the tools uh, which you can use to build those interesting apps. So let's get on to the agenda. Uh, Okay, so the today's agenda is Slack like platform overview. Then we talk about directory apps. We talk about workflow builder, which, uh, which is a visual uh, no code tool. We'll also talk about uh, platform capabilities, APIs, and developer resources. Uh, so let's get started with Slack platform. Uh, but before that, as a proud Slack employee, I want to state our mission, Slack's mission. So, and that is to make people's working life simpler, more pleasant, and more productive. Uh, it's it's a simple looking mission, but it's a very ambitious mission. And whatever we do at Slack, uh, whether we are designing a product, building a product, talking to customers, collaborating with each other, uh, we always keep in mind this mission. Now, Slack platform, uh, on the other hand, is a part of Slack. Uh, and we have our own mission, and that is to help you unlock more value from your existing tools. How to unlock more value from your existing tools? By enabling you to use them with Slack. Now, you must be wondering, why do we care about existing tools or external tools? Because we claim that Slack is a place where work happens or you get your work done. And getting work done doesn't just mean you send chat or uh, you chat with your colleagues or send files, right? Work, uh, you can imagine how many tools right now you're using when you are getting your work done, especially in this remote setup, right? So it's also important to use these tools efficiently and be productive while doing that, right? So that's where Slack comes into picture. And as you know, there are hundreds of thousands of tools already there in the market and some of you must be using dozens of them, right? So, and these tools are spread across multiple verticals. Uh, for example, finance team is using their own tools, sales team is using their own tools, marketing is using their own tools. Now, when these cross-functional teams come together and they have to get work done, now these tools, they are great, but they are also like information silos. So when a finance team wants to collaborate with HR team and when they have their own tool, how they use these tools together? So solution is Slack, and especially Slack platform. And Slack platform allows you to use different set of tools while collaborating together. OK, how do we do that? So there are a bunch of options uh, for integrating your tools with Slack. And they all fall under the category of app. So what is an app? So an app is an entity which resides in your Slack workspace. Uh, app usually has a bot user and bot user can do almost all of the stuff 
which a normal user can do, like sending message, receiving message, uh, uploading file, reacting with emojis, all those things an app can do. In fact, a bot user can do a lot more. It can open up a model, it can collect input, it can send requests to uh, the third party APIs. So using an app and which also comes up with a bot user, you can integrate your tools with Slack. Uh, so by the way, if you have any questions, uh, you can post it in the channel and I can take all those questions at the end of the session. We have a separate time reserve for it. Uh, so there are three types of apps. The first one is a directory app. Uh, these apps are built by our partners uh, and they are publicly available at slack.com uh, app directory. Then there are other apps called workflow apps. Uh, these are uh, usually built by uh, people at your company and we have a, a tool called workflow builder uh, using which you can build uh, workflow apps. Then we have something called custom apps and which uh, being a developer that is my favorite because you can use Slack's public APIs and build whatever you want. You can build from, uh, you can automate a lot of things at your company. You can uh, create some fun apps and I'm going to give some examples later. So let's talk about directory apps first. And I'm not uh, enough of talk, uh, let's switch to the demo first. So I am at my Slack workspace uh, and uh, here uh, I am, let's imagine a scenario. So uh, let's say I'm a customer success manager and I always speak to a customer called acme.com and uh, I usually share a lot of things in the channel. So by the way, when Usually when you are talking to a customer, you are talking them with them via email, right? But not in Slack. If you're using Slack, you can uh, use something called Slack Connect. And using Slack Connect, two different organizations who are in Slack can share channel, not just two. 20 different organizations who have their Slack can share a channel and collaborate with each other. And this is a very powerful mechanism. So let's imagine I am talking to acme.com and this is a shared channel with them. Uh, and I have a monthly meeting with them. So what usually I do is I use this shortcut. So uh, by the way, I have installed a bunch of apps uh, in uh, this workspace. You can click on plus browse apps and add your own apps. Then you can authenticate with this app. So I have already done this in the interest of time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a event in a Google calendar so I'm going to say at me and then I'll just keep date and time. I can invite guests. I can check their availability right from here and I say create event. So this has actually created an event in my Google calendar. Uh, I can check it here. So this is called apps homepage where you can check the event. You can browse this schedule for tomorrow or any custom date. You can also create an event. And if somebody invites you using Google calendar, uh, you will get a message here and you can directly respond from here. So this is just an example of one app, right? Let's talk about another app. Uh, now I schedule this meeting and before the meeting, I also want to uh, have a Zoom call, like during the meeting, I have to have, I want to have a Zoom call on, uh, on Zoom, right? So I just type slash Zoom and boom. So I have this nice looking blog I can click on this join button. Anybody in this channel can click on a join button and quickly get on Zoom. Now, during the meeting, we decided that they want some feature to be implemented. So I have to do some research and present some options. Uh, so I, for that, I'm going to use an app called Simple Poll. So I'm going to create a poll. So let's say the feature is feature one and it can be implemented on web or it can be also implemented on mobile. So I say continue and I create this poll. So Acme customer is, uh, they are fond of mobile. So they vote with mobile. So everybody says, oh, we want to build a mobile app. So next step, I'm going to create a presentation and give a proposal for this app. So again, I'm going to use a Google Drive app, to create a presentation. And I title it Acme123 and see here, I can share this presentation with all members in the channel right from here. Okay, so I'm not going to create it right away, uh, just to interest of time. Now, people like my presentation and they react with awesome. 
using an app called Giddy, right? So yeah, they say awesome. So now just take a step back. In the last couple of minutes, we have almost used five apps and I have not left my Slack channel. And all these apps, I'm not using it alone. I'm using in the Slack channel with my other team members. And that's the power of Slack platform and Slack apps. Using Slack app, you can in, uh, increase your productivity many fold. Okay, so let's go back to our next topic. <clears throat> uh, I, okay, sure. So next topic is workflow apps. So by the way, there are 2000 plus apps in Slack app directory uh, and they are in different categories, productivity, sales, developer tools, HR finance. So go use it, go use all the apps. Next step. So next step is, uh, next type of apps are called workflow apps. They are built by a tool called Workflow Builder. Now Workflow Builder is a visual tool. It's a no code tool. So, and it helps you to automate routine processes using by creating customer custom workflows. Okay. Now, what are the different workflows in your organization? You can submit a lead request. You can onboard a new team member. You can report a bug. You can share update with multiple channels and you can, you can do a lot of stuff with Workflow Builder. Uh, and this is a nice screenshot of a workflow. A workflow starts with a trigger. Uh, it can, the trigger can be user action. Uh, then you can have multiple steps. For example, right now triggers is a shortcut actions menu. Then there is a form. If you fill this form, uh, a message is sent to a channel, right? So using this visual tool, you can uh, uh, basically create and publish workflows in the channel. There are different kinds of trigger. Uh, so um, in the last slide, I talked about user triggered events. Uh, but you can also have schedule trigger. Let's say you want to have a daily standup. So uh, you can trigger that using schedule trigger. There are a bunch of other triggers and a lot of interesting options you can do with workflows. If you want to get started, you, we have uh, customizable templates. Uh, you can start with a template, modify it for your own uh, use case and start using it. For example, we have a template for onboarding new channel members. Uh, we also have a template for uh, giving a shout out. So this is my favorite template. I'm going to show you how it works. So let's get on to the demo number two. So again, I'm back to my share channel and uh, I have this workflow called give a shout out. So if, if I feel that my colleague is doing really well, so I give him a, or her a shout out. So I am going to choose just my name for simplicity and the message. Thanks for not messing up this demo. So, so there you go. The uh, shout out is, um, you know, posted to this channel. And one more thing. So the recipient of the shout out, which is me, I also get a message in a Slack bot. So now this is a very simple workflow, uh, uh, but there are a few things you can do. Uh, let's take a look at how I build this workflow. So you can go to the tools and say workflow builder. And I go to that workflow team shout outs. Uh, so it starts with a shortcut menu. Then I created a form. Next step is create a form. Uh, it for this form has two fields. Uh, um, and it asks basically two questions, the recipient and the message. Then the next step is send a message to the channel where the workflow has started. And the final step is send a message to the recipient of the shout out. So it's a very simple workflow. You can be a lot of complex workflows uh, and automate different processes in your organization. Another cool thing is now let's say all team members are giving shout out and you want to consolidate all responses, right? So you can click here and say download form responses. So you get all the responses as a CSV file. Now this workflow is specific to one workspace. You can actually download this workflow file and import in your another workspace or another channel and I uh, use that workflow on the channel. So this is my favorite tool. We have a lot of interesting, fun workflows uh, in Slack and we use those internally. Our customers are using work this workflow builder extensively. 
uh, we have so far thousands of workflows and millions of executions. So that's about workflow builder. Uh, next, now this is my favorite option being a developer. Uh, this is called custom apps. Uh, these are, are the apps built by developers at your company, developers like you and me. And uh, uh, these are apps are built use, these apps are built using Slack public APIs. Now, uh, I show you a bunch of apps, uh, Google Drive, Google Calendar, Poly. You must be thinking that, oh man, these are Google kind of people, they must be using some secret sauce or secret internal API uh, with Slack and they are building all these nice interactive workflows. That's not true. All these apps are built using public Slack APIs. And you can also build similar apps. Okay, so let's get started. How? So first, let's understand the platform capabilities and how you can use those capabilities to build those interesting, nice looking apps. So we have something called Slack App Toolkit, and which is your happy part to building engaging apps. As I mentioned, app is an entity which lives in your Slack workspace and it introduces a bot user, right? Uh, and that's how uh, it, uh, it, uh, the bot user can interact with you or your external tools, right? So next, uh, so there are four components of this toolkit. The first one is called permissions. Um, how do I explain permission? Okay, so let's say you are installing an app on your phone, Android phone or iOS phone. And when you are using or before installing that app, it asks for permission. This app can read your SMS or you know uh, uh, capture your camera, etc. So it is asking for permission. Similarly, when you install an app in Slack, it will also ask for permission. It will tell you that this app will be able to view this information, and it will it will be able to take these actions. So when your administrator is installing app in Slack, uh, they can. Uh, verify what are the permissions required and then decide whether to allow or not okay this is a very powerful model and all our enterprise users like this model a lot next thing so usually uh, first i want to uh, before we talk about block kit uh, i want to just talk about a misconception a lot of uh, people i talked to they felt that building an app in slack is like building a chat bot. Yeah, you know, you say hi and it replies with hello and then you type something it replies back to something else. Yes, you can build a chat bot. But why would you build a text chat bot when you can build an interactive app, right? Text chat bots are boring, they're, they're slow. Okay, so then how do you build an interactive app in Slack? That's where Blockit comes into picture. So Blockit is our UI framework and for building interesting, innovative, and interactive app experiences. Now, let's take a uh, look at Google Calendar again. So Google Calendar, this is the home app home or home page for Google Calendar app at Slack. It has a lot of uh, elements like buttons, dead pickers, and links, and then overflow menus, etc. All these elements are called blocks in Slack. And the framework which allows you to render these blocks, it's called block kit. What kind of blocks are available? So we have input block, we have multi-line block, then we have multi-select, radio buttons, checkboxes, image blocks, and bunch of other blocks. So using all these blocks, you can build a nice interactive app in Slack. Again, time for the demo. So this is my favorite tool. It's called block kit builder and you can use it to prototype your apps before you you know actually start coding so let me get on to the demo so here is a blockkit builder uh, you can type api.slack.com or you can directly go to blockkit builder using a link so what happens here on the left hand side you have different uh, interactive elements you can render it on this section and then you get a json block in the right section so you can either start from scratch or you can start from a template so for example you can click on a template and let's say use message template so it has rendered a block it has also uh, it's also showing a json uh, corresponding to this block now 
I'll just clear this and maybe I'll start with my own. So I can use a header block. Then I want to put an image. Uh, then I want to put some button, then date picker, then time picker, right? So let's say this is, of course, this is a horrible looking uh, design, but I do all these things and I, I feel good about it. So I can say copy payload and use this payload in Slack APIs in your code. And then it will render a nice uh, interactive Slack message. Um, and this is very useful to we use it every day at Slack. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation now. <clears throat> Next, now we saw what is block it, what are blocks, where you can render these blocks. Obviously, in a message, yeah, that's but that's just a one surface. We have multiple surfaces where you can render a block. So as I said, messages is one surface. You can create a message with interactive elements and post it uh, to the Slack channel. Your bot can post that message to a Slack channel. Next uh, is other option is called modals. A modal is a pop-up surface. And we, I, I think everyone is familiar with the uh, concept of modal. So it's a pop-up surface. You can implement dynamic multi-step workflows in a modal. Uh, you open up a modal, collect the input, click on submit, which opens another modal. Uh, maybe you say close and your workflow is done, right? So you can, uh, your app can uh, open these models and take inputs, show dynamic content, exit. And this is very useful. The third surface is called home or home tab or app home, right? Uh, so this is like an index.html or a home page for your Slack. So let's see, uh, take a look at each of these options one by one. Uh, again, as I mentioned, Moodle is a pop-up surface. Let's take a, see the example. So this is the bridge is a learning platform which offers course enrollment at Slack. So uh, see, it is opening a bunch of models. Uh, for example, uh, let's start over again. You type slash bridge, search, click on search library, search for a course, click on enroll, say OK, and you are done. So this flow has a bunch of models and it, it's a nice example of how do you use model in your app next next let's talk about app home uh, it's a it's again as i mentioned it's an index.html for your slack app uh, it, it's kind of a home page what can you do on your home page it's not a static page by the way it's a dynamic page uh, so let's take an example of uh, a ticketing platform called help uh, so they have built this dynamic dynamic dashboard on their home page you have a create ticket button then you have learn more button view browser button uh, then you can also filter your tickets uh, and you can show some important tickets on your home page so this is really really useful i also showed you a google calendar home page where you could uh, take a look at today's events or tomorrow's events right so this is this can be an entry point uh, to the app. You can build a lot of interesting thing uh, in your home page. Oh, so let's talk about the last option, which is called shortcuts. Uh, now, I already showed you an example of a shortcut when we created a Google Calendar event or when we created a Google Drive file or presentation. So shortcut uh, on your message pane, uh, this bold icon is called shortcut. Uh, so you can click here and choose an option, right? But there is another type of shortcut. It's called message shortcut. So in a channel, you can click on a Slack message and say, uh, and launch this shortcut. So typical use case is, let's say your manager assigns a task, say, hey, can you please complete this task? So you can just click right, uh, click and say, create a Jira ticket or create a task at Asana, right? So it's, it's a very powerful mechanism again. So let's take a look at some examples. I already showed you this example of a global shortcut uh, when we created a poll. So you, I clicked on the shortcut menu. I, I said, create poll, create a poll. And then I entered some details. I worked, clicked on create and there was a poll available in your Slack channel. So this is an example of a uh, global shortcut. Uh, 
next let's talk about message shortcut so again a good example as i already given you uh, you can choose a message and directly create a ticket out of that message so this is an example of zendesk app uh, where you can right click on the message and say create a new ticket okay so let me just revise uh, i've covered a lot of topics so far so if you want to build a slack app what you have you have a slack app toolkit s a t k is a short form in slack app toolkit you have permissions you have um, surfaces you have uh, shortcuts and then you have a ui framework called blockkit right so using all these capabilities uh, you can build a nice interactive app at slack so now you can believe me when i say you uh, slack app is not just you know uh, a textual chatbot right uh, and again, I want to re re reiterate the same thing. All those apps I showed are built using Slack's public API. There is no secret special sauce involved. So if they can do it, you can also do, uh, implement similar kind of apps. So now the question is, how do I get started, right? So let's talk about some interesting tools and uh, technologies and SDKs and developer resources. So the starting point should be api.slack.com slash start. Here you can find a bunch of resources on how to get started, how to plan your app, how to design a great app experience. Then you can also get information about Slack SDKs, tools, uh, and different set of uh, options you have in order to build a nice Slack app, right? So Start Hub is your place to start. Then let's talk about what are the different types of APIs available. So there are more categories, but I want to just highlight a few. Uh, the first one is web app. So, uh, sorry, web API. So if you want to send a message from your app to Slack channel, or if you want to open a model, take an input, if you want to like on submit uh, of that model, you want to take some action, or if you want to upload a file in a channel, react with an emoji or read an emoji all those sorry not read emoji react with an emoji uh, list users in the channel get user info all these things you can do with web api web api has vast set of methods in order to accomplish a lot of tasks at slack right then the reverse path if you want to listen for the events coming from slack you can use events api so for example, you can subscribe for events like a user joining a new channel or user uploading a file, user sharing the link or user reacting to uh, a message with an emoji. So all these things, all these events, you can listen using events API. Uh, so this web API is from your app to the Slack uh, for, for sending messages or the flow is from your app code to the Slack, uh, the events API are for the reverse path. Then we also have an RTM API. It's kind of our legacy API. We don't recommend it, using it anymore unless you have a very specific use case. Most of your use cases will be satisfied by a web API, uh, web API or events API, right? So these are the simple APIs you can use. So again, time for the demo. <clears throat> Sorry, just let me get some water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, one second. Cool. So I'm going to go to api.slack.com. Uh, I clicked on the APIs and I have already chosen my favorite API. It's called chat.post message. So it sends a message to a channel. Now here you can take a look at the documentation of this app, arguments and the responses, then sample responses, etc. Right? Uh, then you can also go to this tester page where what you can do, you, you can put some uh, inputs. Uh, let's say you can so first you have to create an app, generate a token, put that token here, then you can give a channel name, say general, and 
put some text hello world right and you can give some optional parameters and say test method so right now it is showing no auth because i have not uh, given the correct token but that's how you test your api and this will send a message to your one of your slack workspaces so you can directly verify uh, the output of the test method right now another cool thing so we talked about block it right so you can use this blocks parameter so we had this block created here you can say copy payload from here and then put that payload here and again, call this test method and it will send a nice block uh, to your Slack channel. Now, if you're satisfied with your API and you say, hey, this API works for me, now you can also grab a code from here. Right now, we are only supporting JavaScript, but yes, we add more code examples. And sorry, when I mean, uh, when I say I'm, we are supporting JavaScript means only for sample codes. We have a bunch of SDKs for most of the programming languages. Okay, so here you can grab a code. For example, you have, uh, I've called this API in my JavaScript client, app.client.chat.post message, right? So as I mentioned, we have we are trying our best to give you all resources, uh, testing tools and sample codes to, uh, to make your life easier, to make it easy to build a new app. Okay, let's go back to the next slide okay so now what are the tools available uh, so the first one is called bolt bolt js or bolt for java these are the two uh, official sdks or frameworks uh, created by slack and uh, it helps you to quickly build javascript based or java based slack apps um, it does most of the foundation work for you uh, for setup, etc., so that you just focus on you know, implementing the logic. Uh, so you can go to slack.dev and bolt, and it's, it's, I mean, if you follow the instruction, you can build a sample Hello World app in, say, 20 25 minutes. Then we have uh, SDKs for other programming languages. Some of these SDKs are built by us, so there is an official SDK for Python and Node.js but there are other SDKs uh, built by our Slack community in different other programming languages. So you, you are going to have a lot of options uh, if you want to decide, if you decide building an app. Then we have a bunch of development tools. So you can you go to api.slack.com slash tools. I already showed you two tools. The first, uh, first one uh, was this block kit builder where you can do a prototyping. The second one is uh, this tester tool, where you can actually test an API and see the output in your Slack workspace. So these are very useful tools if you are building for the first time or even for seasoned developers, all these tools are like must have. Then uh, let's talk about my favorite, Slack app Pathfinder. So if you are beginning, if you are a beginner and building an app for the first time, this is the place for you. So what I, I'm just going to say start over. So what this uh, this tool does is it asks you some set of questions. Right? It asks you what you want to do with your app. So you, you say, hey, my app is sending notification to multiple channels. OK. Uh, yeah. So you say yes or no. Uh, sometimes you say don't know. Uh, my app wants to interact with individual users to pop up windows. I showed you. Uh, Models, right? So you want to use models. You say, of course, I want to use model. I don't want to build a boring textual app. And then you say, yes, I want to listen for the events. Uh, for now, I'm clicking no. And you can answer these questions. I'm just going to click yes, no. Then you can also choose favorite programming language. I say JavaScript. And you can say, I'm developing an app for my team. So we talked about custom app and directory app. So sometimes you can start building a custom app and then you say, hey, this is a cool app. I want to publish it to every, uh, publish it to app directory so that everyone can use it. So you have an option of publishing your app to an app directory. We have a process for that. We do some validations. Um, and then once that app is approved, you can 
Um, so everybody can use it. Right? Uh, so here I say I'm developing this app only for my team. No, no, I want to publish it. So I click on next. Uh, I say yes, I want to publish this for in my app directory. So now, based on uh, your answers, it is giving you some recommendation, and you can copy this link and share it with your teammates. So what are the recommendations? So it says, okay, if you want to have every uh, app needs to uh, configure permissions, so you can get started with uh, bot permissions. If you want to have uh, what flow you want to have, you can refer this link. Uh, we said that, hey, we are going to distribute to, uh, this app to app directory. So there's a link for distribution. Then uh, you say, uh, I want to use interactive uh, surfaces. Uh, so that's why it is showing all these uh, uh, recommendations like block it, messages, models, etc. cetera. Uh, it's also, it also talks about app home, uh, shortcuts, and then you can also, uh, you mentioned that you want to uh, send messages and do a lot of stuff. So that for that you have the uh, reference or web API, and for interactive components uh, you can go to this link. Then there is a recommendation for tools uh, and SDKs, and there are some hello world tutorials here. So that's how you can get started. Um, so this is another demo. Let's see. Uh, next. So let me again talk about Slack platform community. It is a place to share, connect uh, with Slack makers. You can share your challenges, report issues, give feedback. You can also share your success stories. You can share the solutions. Uh, so for that, you can uh, find your group at slackcommunity.com. Or you can also, so there is a workspace for Slack community developers. You can join that workspace. It's a really cool place to hang out. You will find developers from all over the world sharing their uh, feedbacks sharing their showcasing their work launching new apps and helping each other um, to grow so uh, before i conclude i just want to recap what we discussed we talked about directory apps i showed you some examples of nice uh, apps like google calendar google drive uh, simple pool uh, some fun apps like J jiffy uh, then we talked about workflow builder it is used for building or automating routine processes at Slack. Then we talked about building custom apps. How can you build a custom app? What is SATK Slack app toolkit? How you can use different platform capabilities? Uh, how can you use different set of tools uh, and then different set of SDKs? Right. So if you want to ask, how can I be productive at Slack? So you can be First, you can be a Slack app user. You can use as many apps as possible. Then encourage your teammates to use those apps because when you are using these apps together, uh, your productivity as a team improves a lot. So once you are an app user, you can be an app maker. And uh, to become an app maker, you can start with workflow or builder. Uh, automate some easy, interesting tasks in your organization. Once you are familiar with Workflow Builder and apps concepts, then you can dive into building your own custom apps using uh, Slack App Toolkit. And I hope that if you do all these things, it makes you uh, makes your work life simpler and more productive. And if that happens, we'll feel that our mission is accomplished. And on that note, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, all the organization the organizers for this wonderful opportunity. And thanks for joining. Uh, and I can take questions now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Athar. That indeed was very great. Also seeing a lot of demos, I believe uh, everybody was able to grasp what the actual essence of all of these topics were. Uh, I encourage all of you, uh, if you have any questions, you can post it down in the chat box. And till the time you're doing that, um, I'm also sharing the link for the SPC workspace that is there in the chat box itself, so that you all can join. And then you can find out the chapter 
um, top in the top in the search bar as SPC hyphen complete Chinchwar. And once you do that, you'll be able to uh, meet with other fellow developers who are interested in building, get your query solved, help others solve their queries. Indeed, it will be really great. Um, so, so that it is comfortable for all of you, uh, I'll be stopping the recording now. You can feel free to post your questions and write and connect with us through the chat box.